and our second talk we have James, James Hogan from MB, so he's going to talk about his spring scraping tool. Mm. Thank you, thank you Shirley. So um, I just want to emphasise that uh, all of the material which uh, I'm talking about is presented, is stored on our agenda. So don't don't try to follow what I'm uh, uh, what I'm on about on the screen. You don't need to follow it. You can take a look at it in your own time. It's all here. And also, um, David's uh, the tips and tricks are, are here as well. And one of the reasons why I want to emphasise that is we've just had a little bit of a technical hitch with the video. I'm sorry, David, it didn't hold. So. <coughs> So, okay, screen scraping the internet. One of the reasons why uh, we're sort of interested in, in doing this here at MB is that uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things we're trying to do is get, in, uh, get a sense of what's happening out, out in the real economy. And some of the things which we look at uh, significantly are Stats New Zealand data, different types of information we get administratively through, through uh, other government agencies. But uh, we like to get a sense of what's happening out in the sector and uh, what's happening in the economy and what's happening around the world. And one of the things we've found is that screen scraping is a, is a nice uh, way of, of doing this. I just want to run you through how, we, how we're doing it in R. And, uh, but first off, uh, do we have Tony from Trade Me here? <coughs> no, no, no we don't. He signed up, he was, he was going to come today. And uh, one of the reasons why um, uh, um, uh, I was hoping to talk to him is that when we had a, a, a trial this out, um, we, we use trade me data and one of the reasons around that is we were looking at the Canterbury rebuild and we're looking at what was happening with rents and what was happening with the common market and while at MB we can see through the bond database the bonds which are actually lodged we don't have a sense of how, how long has that, uh, has that property been on the market for so we were using trade me data to take a, get a sense of what's happening and we're doing it quite quickly and elegantly through R but uh, once we figured out how to do that, we, we, we were scaling it up and taking a look at, well, what's happening with Auckland? What's happening around the place? And then once we read the disclaimer, uh, we thought, well, we'd better not do this anymore. <laughs> hey, so, uh, could you come against, like, how many hits an hour were you doing? Well, um, we were doing it, well, um, the screen scraping hits uh, at quite a few per minute. So it's not per hour, it's, okay. it's, it's per minute. It's because it's an automated, uh, automated process. Yeah. All the, th the, the only thing holding us up was the latency of the network. Did you uh, consider using the Trade Me API? We did consider using the Trade Me API, and we, and we get that now through, our, uh, uh, through the, through the, uh, the labour data, and uh, it's, it's all nice and, nice and above board now. So that's why we don't do it, but I just want to put out that aspects of this are illegal, especially if you don't follow it. But Especially if you don't follow the the um, the terms and conditions associated with the website, so there are uh, websites which it's perfectly legal, and some of which I uh, 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 they encourage you to do it. And those are the ones I'm going to show you today. But don't do this if it's breaking any laws, and um, particularly take a note of, of the terms and conditions on the website. Did you test that out with a lawyer and the? We're a government department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. yeah. We've spent a bit, bit of cash on, on researching exactly that point, and it still seems like it's a bit of a grey area. It might be, but we are on the, are on the safe side. And uh, uh, if anything is particularly smelling iffy, we won't do it. So, end of story. It's just as clear cut as that. <clears throat> but um, so, how do we do it? And what do we do, and how do we do it? Well. Despite the fact you hear a lot of things about Java and about Ruby on Rails and about PHP and about .NET and every other sort of new popular language under the sun, everything is pretty on the internet is pretty much rendered in HTML, hypertext markup language. And it has been that way ever since ever since the web was invented close to it. So um, one of the things about it is hypertext markup language is well structured uh, structured language, and it's, mm -hmm. it, it, it has things like opening and closing uh, uh, syntax and format, and through Following the, the well structured nature of the, uh, of the language itself, you can go through and find the components which are effectively the data inside the structure. And that's one of the things which I, I, I want to show you is about how do we, how do, we do that. And um, the cunning plan for this type of screen scraping approach is to read in a website as a string of HTML and then start passing the HTML and, 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 and taking a look at its structure and its form and then within that pulling out the data. 
So the, one of the ways we do it, uh, and the way we do it in R, is, is using the, the library R curl. And curl is a command line uh, uh, functionality which has been around since, mm -hmm. since Donkey's age. And um, it's because it's a free client-side uh, type of protocol, you'll find it everywhere. And I first came across it when I was, when I was playing around with PHP and doing some, doing some things, screen scraping in PHP. Uh, but uh, it's also in R, it's, and it's, it's quite well suited to R because not only does it, does it have that web functionality of being able to get things off the web, but it's now coupled together with a very, very strong, powerful analytical and visualization language. So it suits itself quite nicely. So one of the things which, the, the general approach we do this is uh, first, well, I'll show you some examples of capturing a nice, easy hypertext markup language table, which is a, a simple, simple structure, but despite its simplicity, you'll find it everywhere uh, on, on, on quite, a, quite a few websites. And uh, then I, uh, we'll go through, I'll show you how to, how to capture an Excel spreadsheet, and then from there, I'll show you, uh, I'll show you how to capture some of the more uh, advanced, uh, advanced um, uh, types of websites, and uh, I'll use our, our MB data, uh, uh, tourism data, data website as an example. But the general approach is um, over here. Um, this is this is the guy that's going to do all the work. R curl, but um, Excel uh, Connect is the is, is the library I like to, to, to use to be able to access uh, Excel data set, well, Excel spreadsheets using the Java language. XML's got some really fantastic uh, tips and tricks to be able to sort of go through and rip out that, that well-structured nature of HTML. And um, I'm also going to load a couple of other things to be able to do things on the fly. And one of them is ggmaps, which is a geocode tool which, which Google create, or have created and, and, and made available. And I'll show you how, how that's used to be able to do some pretty whizzy stuff on the fly. So, this looks scary. <laughs> But don't let it fool you. The first thing it's going to do, the top line is it's going to get, in, uh, uh, once I've loaded all that functional, uh, all the functionality over here, the top line is, is going to get a URL. So this, the, this little example, I'm going to go off to the World Bank data, and we're going to pull down one of the, one of the many indicators. The next line, uh, HTML pass, uses some of the functionality in the XML library to be able to pass the HTML, the string of text, into a structure which, is, uh, uh, which has got a little, little bit more structure and definition to it. And then from that, I'm going to um, read in, via the read HTML table, everything which, is in the, uh, everything which is in the website that says table. So I'm pulling straight out of, that, uh, out of the website everything which is defined to be a table of the website. And then a couple of other things I do, because the data is coming in as a factor, I turn, turn all the countries into, into characters. Because the numeric data I'm after is also a factor. I turn that back into numbers. And um, this is the bit which is going to do the, uh, do the geocoding. So um, I, I grab, all the uh, grab all the countries and then fire it off to Google. And Google geocode and return it to me. And um, from there, take the data, stick, it on, uh, 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 stick the geocoded data back to the original data set. And then all this here is just some of, the, some of the functionality around making a pretty picture, which gets made here. So this is the bit which does the pretty picture, then at the end I output it. So going to the, going to the data itself, here's the World Bank data set, and make it a little bit smaller. Here's, here's the range of data which, which is available. So it's a truckload of stuff. And the one we're, we're going to pick on specifically is the HIV prevalence. So this is the data as it's displayed on the net. And this whole area here turns out to be an HTML table. And because of it, it's displayed nicely, but it's, it's able to be captured uh, uh, through R. And we'll just do that kind of quickly. I'll just um,
get some functionality going on. I'll just wait for that to boot up, I'll, I'll carry on with the presentation. But once you run that, this is, this is what pops out. So the, the top table is, is, is the raw HTML, well, is the process HTML code. And um, it's, it should look exactly like this in terms of content. So if Galstan is up the top, there it is there. It's pulling down, pulling down the data, and it's done that by passing through the, the HTML string and then whipping out all of the things which are the table, then inside the table, grabbing all the columns and turning all the columns into, ver uh, uh, um, into, into variables. And then from there, that, uh, the rest of the code went off and uh, treated it. How's this looking? Nah, it's off doing its own thing. And at the end of running that, that's the, the that's that's the output output uh, map it's created. And um, yeah, all of those all of those points, all of the um, countries up there, it uh, that piece of code has gone off to Google. Google's told it whereabouts is the centre of that country, uh, in, a, in a latitude and longitude sense, and um, it's 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 gone through and. Um, plotted the, um, the prevalence of HIV as percentage of, of, of total population. Some of the other code which I, uh, which I had there, um, especially around, around here, just, just does all the sizing uh, and um, to, to, to be able to make sure that we can get sort of differences in, 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 in emphases. This is a little bit cluttered and some, some of the cleanup you might want to do is remove some of those some of the smaller ones which aren't, uh, aren't, um, uh, aren't that uh, important relative to the, to, to the larger ones around it. But you sort of get the picture. And I could have done this with any of that data up on this website. <coughs> so any of the World Bank data is, is, is publicly available, all screen, scrap, uh, all screen <coughs> scrappable. And uh, they do have an API which, which you can use. But for a government department to be able to access that API would have to probably work with their IT department. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see the humour in it. <laughs> so, uh, but where's screen scraping? I can do that right here and right now, if the IT worked, which is rather ironic. I have to find the correct URL. Yeah, find the correct URL. Now, James. Yeah. Um. So that works for static uh, HTML tags. What about the dynamics? Um, well, the dynamic table, that's, that's the thing about it. Um, all these data, database-driven websites, um, the, the dynamic content of it is still displayed in static HTML. And because they're all drawn from a database, the underlying database is itself a static structure, unless you get some pretty, pretty wizzy databases. Mm -hmm. So what you tend to find in a lot of dynamically-driven databases is that the structure of the HTML is itself quite static. And the, and, 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 and the columns and, and structure of the underlying database is itself static. The thing which is turning over and, and, and doing that dynamic bit of thing is the data. But because the database itself is static, the HTML is static, you do a, a complex piece of, of screen scraping once, you've captured it, and um, the underlying data will change. And the, and the, the one I'm just about to show you here is a, is a, is a classic example. Like for example, here is the Littleton Pool Company. Now the Littleton Pool Company throws up uh, all, of their, all of their information about what ships are, are in port at the moment. And one of the reasons why MB is, is, is kind of interested in this type of data is we like to know what commodities are moving around the country. And why we like to know what commodities are moving around the country is because we're, we're quite interested in, in seeing things like how is Canterbury, how is Canterbury production rebounded? And uh, uh, one of the things they can be do is they're a centre of a, a, quite an agricultural area, as uh, a, a, as uh, production sort of a, as agriculture blossoms around them, a, uh, a, a lot of the produce and a lot of the commodities are aggregated in in in, in Christchurch with a little bit of processing, but effectively wholesale and distribution 
is a large aspect of, of, of what Christchurch does. And transporting um, the, 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 the commodities and the, and, and the manufactured commodities further north or south is an important measure of what's happening underlying, underlying Canterbury's rebuild. And um, if you, Stats New Zealand, to get that data from Stats New Zealand, you're looking at, at, at a couple of year lag as things like the annual enterprise survey captures things like how successful has agricultural been. And even, the, even like their agricultural production, you're seeing things like um, um, uh, 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 selected commodities with a couple of months lag, but they're only selected commodities. And what we want to see is what's going out of the port. Uh, so th here's one, which is um, Littleton Port Companies is, is not alone in this. You'll find a lot of port companies have their, have their transit data. And a lot of the things they do is, like for example, here's one which is going from Littleton to Auckland, two going from Littleton to Auckland. So that gives us some sort of idea about what might the volume of, of, of things be. And this one is, well, um, containers. N not, not, entirely, not entirely descriptive. But here's some fish. And here's some coal. And here's some more fish. So across, uh, across all of the ports in New Zealand, you get some sort of sense of the, of the, of the commodity flow. And that's sort of one of the things which we're quite interested in. But when I screen scraped this um, yesterday, here's the nature, uh, uh, here's what I got back, which is exactly, exactly that process I was showing you before. First thing, go off, get a URL um, uh, using curl. It returns back res, which is a, 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 an object, but it's effectively a, a, a character string. I use HTML parse of, of, of that character string to strip out all of, the, all of the structure of the data. And then from there, I use read HTML table to actually throw up all the tables. And here's the one, here's the one I'm interested in. And coming back to your point about, well, what happens when the underlying data changes? Well, it doesn't matter. Because here's one where the underlying data has changed. And the static nature of the HTML, together with the static nature of the database, which is used to populate the HTML, doesn't change. And that's the thing. Which is, uh, which, which is what you're locking onto and trying to get to. Now, as you can see, this is, this is a, a messy data in the sense that you've got NAs over here and you've got something going on here, coastal shipping, which is obviously a heading, and then you've got things over here where um, th that's a, a, a departure date and here's one with the departure time and no departure dates to be approved. And that's going back to the underlying structure of, of the data itself and there's nothing you can do about that which is uh, w w one, of the sort of, one of the sort of points w when I want to make when you, when you come across these things is that um, in some of these data sets, it's, it's quite well structured and you can pull out data which you don't need to, to, to play around with and clean. But some of these other ones, you don't need to play around and clean. You don't need to do something with it. It's, uh, it's, it's accessing the data, but you've got to touch it. You've got to, uh, as we call it, um, you've got to groom it. So um, one of the last things I, I want to show you is, is, is a sort of process and sequence we use at MB to do it. But um, yeah, here's data straight out. And if I, run that, if I run this program every single day across all of the, of the ports, then every single day I've got a sense of all of the, all, all of the shipping happening. And then I can start to line up the, the, the things of, for example, the spirit of independence, which was last in Auckland, is heading off to, to Nelson next time with a, with a truckload of containers of something. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get some sort of sense of, of the economic flows and, and, and what might be the commodities moving around. I don't know how many bananas Christchurch are getting. How many bananas, yeah. Now, um, so, but not everything, not everything on the internet exists as, as um, an HTML table or something nice and easy. And, uh, it's, it's one of the bane of our lives, but a lot of, uh, a lot of organisations release data in Excel. And it's a bugger of a thing, because it, it looks really, really good, but it's not. Like, for example, here's one. So this one, this one, uh, come back here. This one, uh, it's, it's going to use the, the, the function download.file. And there it's going to head off, go to URL, find the thing you want. And then WB means pull it down in binary mode. So that's, the, that's telling it you're going to get some data. And um, one of the things I do, it's a, it's a three front approach. First off, download the data, stash it in some place, and then map its con uh, stash it in some place and map its contents, 
and then read in the individual data. Now here's the data which we're going to read in. So it's Stats New Zealand data comprising a truckload of, of um, uh, a truckload of tabs, one of them is the contents, then we've got data which looks like this. How's this going? Oh. Will it be your lucky day? Yes. So this is just um, this is exactly the same file which is up on the on the internet, but because we're a government department, everything goes through a proxy server. So you've got to figure out how to handle the proxy server. And um, we've got a bit of functionality down here which tells it what's our proxy server, and captures captures my my login and then passes it to it so I can I can run it. So I'll just get that going. but don't delete everything. Well, that's off doing its thing. So this is the data, data we want to get. And it's all nice, uh, nicely formatted, but from, from our perspective, it's causing, I can see, see already it's going to cause me problems. First off, I've got a column of data here, then an empty one. Then a column of data there, and an empty <coughs> one. The next thing I've got over here is primary industries, and then there's a footnote. And then there's a whole heap of gap here, which is going to cause me problems. It looks fantastic uh, for the users, but when a machine reads that, it's, it causes no end of problems. And that's still reading. So what this piece of, what this piece of code does is it goes off, grabs that, grabs that file, Goes off, grabs that file, and then stores it in a, in a temporary hold, holding place. So, this file, although they called it Prod Anzac 6 Industry Stats XLS, I'm just calling it a generic name of dump. Um, and just, just putting it in a, in, in a common place, a fixed name in a common place. Because the next thing I, I, I'm going to do is use the functionality of Excel Connect to load that database, well, uh, to load that Excel spreadsheet into a workbook. And then, this gets sheets function takes that workbook object and um, strips out all the names and with a, a couple of matrix operations it turns that into into a column so it gives me a vector a vector of, of tab names of inside inside that spreadsheet so I, I, I don't need to know what the, what the tab names are themselves the program will tell me so um, it reads it in calls it tab names creates a, d a data frame and puts the whole thing into an object. Then I use the size of the object to iterate around through a loop, and this assign function is tremendously powerful. But what the assign function does is it takes two components. The first component up to there is the name, is an object. The second component over there is the thing you're going to do to it, and what this does is it uses my, uses my iterator to go through all the tabs, pull out the tabs, read the sheet in, reads the entire sheet into, uh, uh, into an object, then takes the tab name, strips out all the spaces, puts underscores in, and then assigns the value of that entire tab to that name, and then goes through. So at the end of that process, an automated process, I've got data which looks like this. A whole truckload of um, CS objects, but um, R objects, which um, represent the content of the Excel spreadsheets. And that could be any generic Excel spreadsheet I want. If some of the things with screen scraping is that you can get it to scrape all the Excel spreadsheets on a, on a website, and then if you wrap this on a loop, 
you're, you're reading all the Excel spreadsheets and all the tabs and all the data on the, spread, on, on, on the website. And how are we going here? Okay, we've got ourselves a, a, a curl handle. Uh, I'll skip that one. Go straight to this one. And we'll just do this. I didn't find the G drive, so I'll just put that somewhere temporary. Off it goes, brings it down. Loading the workbook up as a workbook object. Goes through, cycles through all the sheets. Now it's populating the objects. And in blistering speed, I get that. And now I take a look at that one, the one that, that, that causes me problems. Here's the data. And exactly the, the case, um, here's the top elements which relate to that bit there. The former measured sector becomes this column here, column seven, the gap between the gap between there and there, filled up with blank spaces and empty. It's all it's all there, but now it's messy. Now I've got to do some work on it, but it's all there. So um, it's it, it, it's it's a fantastic way to ac access data and access it uniformly. I don't need to change this code other than point it to a new a new Excel spreadsheet, a new URL. So that's. That's, now, now the last one I want to show you is um, a more cunning plan of attack. What happens if you've got a, a much more complicated website, remember it's a much more complicated website which allows you to screen scrape it, um, and it, it goes back to the, the point you were making sir, is that um, most websites are database driven and, and, and the structure underlying them is static and the, the HTML which, which populates them is static. The data is itself the thing which is moving around and uh, one of the ways, when you start getting specific information like that, you've got to really sculpt it. You've got to really think about, you've got to eyeball the HTML code and find the bit of HTML code which is indicative of that, pe of that data element you want. And um, in, in this instance, here's the code we're going to use. So again, starts off. To find a whole, whole heap of libraries I want, I set up a, uh, the, the magic is, is this uh, curl, uh, get curl handle, and then I pass a whole heap of things to it, and one of the things I want, uh, uh, I want to pass to it is, in this instance, we're going to go to our tourism data, so um, I get a URL, and then from there, I'm, I'm looking for a, a piece of, a piece of, um, a, a piece of information which I've seen before. And the only way you find that is by going to the website. There it is. Take a look over here to view page source. And there's, there's the juicy, juicy HTML, everything you want to find out. And the one I'm looking for, having eyeballed this and knowing a little bit about HTML, is uh, one of the, oh, this piece of word, that word is, is the thing which is going to identify the elements of, of, of the data I want. And that word is, is, is in here, it's going to be one of these things, class equals that word, and then between this div and that div, which is the HTML structure, is going to be my data. Now in this instance, between that word, I've got a, 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 a link, but I've also got something which talks about the New Zealand Cycle Trail. And in, in this example I'm showing you, that's the thing I want to know. I want to find out the URL, I want to find out what's the URL related to. And if later on down, something about 
um, a rich overview of whatever that's about, I want to capture that too. So this little, uh, uh, little piece of code is going to capture those three components. And the way it does that is um, target string. I figure out what's the thing which defines the area I'm after. I, can't, I use um, the um, uh, R's uh, uh, tremendous string processing functionality to count how many times that turns up in the data. Then I, then I build an empty object to, to, to hold the thing which, is going, which I'm going to populate. I split the string into the elements of the thing I want. Now, I, I've already done the string search and found out that there's 9 or 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever of them. This has just carved it out in, into separate lists. And then from there, I iterate around. Start off, I know, I know how many topics there are, isolate the string, find, it, find the, the string locate, put it within a substring, so now it's, 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 it's cutting back the elements of the string, and then capture the data, store it in a URL. The other one, the topic, find the data I want, title uh, 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 body and, and tile uh, footer, put it within a substring, cut it out, and then turn it into the thing I want. So when I run this program, <coughs> just like that. There's all the things I, I really care about in the, uh, of this website. There's the URL. There's the topic, what's it about. And there's the content. So that's gone off and stripped this of everything I, I want to know about what's been happening with tourism data or, or, or the aspects about it. So that's a, that's a little example of, 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 of how you'd screen scrape a, a, a complex website. You've got, to, you've got to sculpt it, you've got to tailor, tailor your code to it. And it's that process. Everything is a string, so cut, paste, cut, paste. Okay. So as you, as you have seen, the data which came out of it is a little bit messy. I've got things which are NAs here. Over here I've got... Things which are um, this, 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 this character there, which is a, a, a little bit of HTML. I've got things which are messy. Oh, this, the collection of the data is the first stage of a much more involved process. And that involved process is collecting the data and then grooming it. So one of the things we do at MB is that we've got data from many, many different sources. And we always productionize the way we approach these, these, these data problems. First off, collect the data from the different data sources, read them all in, uh, 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 and make sure that everything is read in um, uh, um, perfectly as it's coming through. And then we've got this much more intensive process where we check for errors, encode the data to standard variables, standardize the definition. And then only from there do we, does the data progress into something which we can match, relate, compare, contrast, and then from there it heads off into our modeling, visualization, and supporting processes. And what screen scraping is one of the data sources which, uh, which we use to be able to get things which are really, really timely, really, really happening. And that's my talk. Thanks, James. <laughs> James? Can you devise all that yourself, or were there some tutorials or, or some kind of assistance you were able to get to write all that? Um, admittedly, uh, because I started off. Before I came to MB, I used to do a lot of stuff in PHP. So uh, I used to do a lot of a lot, PHP being a web language. This is inside it. Mm. So that's where I learned all about screen scraping and, and curl. Mm. And then all of a sudden, it was like meeting a long lost friend again once I came across R. Must have felt really good. Yeah. <coughs> um, I tried to do this uh, in the uh, Google Doc, and it was yeah. And ran into a snag, which is that their prices aren't rendered in HTML. They seem to use a lot of JavaScript. Yeah. Or do I just not know enough to find the right place? A lot of places use, <coughs> use uh, Java apps and Flash. And uh, so it's, it's, it's not rendered as, a, as, as HTML. It's rendered as an object in Flash. Um, it causes problems. 
So yeah, it, 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 it's one technique. It doesn't. It, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. If they ever ever change the database, you'll find all your, all your code crashing. So things like that. It's 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 a free data source. Sometimes it's really useful. Sometimes it doesn't work. Doesn't it practically mean it depends on the website's uh, intention or how usable they want their data to be sometimes? One of, the, one of the good things about curl is that it, it handles forms, so you can pass it, pass a form content, and then receive back from from the from the, the website a reply. And one of the things which we were thinking about doing is how easy was that to get InfoShare data of Stats New Zealand's website, and uh, that caused a whole heap of problems because of the security Stats New Zealand's put into their website to stop exactly this type of thing. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, a, a lot of effort goes into web developers uh, 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 to stop uh, screen scraping. So the other alternative is to find a relevant uh, Excel or uh, Excel link to download at the CSV. Well, all I gotta say is, if you have a genuine research or official need to do this, ask permission, and, and more often than not, a lot of a lot of places will give you the data. Like uh, in, in the previous life, Harcourt gave me the data. It's, it's not a problem, it's, and, and, and they're much happier to do it like that. If it's going to breach your terms and conditions, don't do it. Um, if, it's, uh, uh, if it's a general research or, or, or official need, pay for it, or you'll, 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 surprise, you'll be surprised how, how freely people give students data. So, research students and things like that, no problem at all. Is that detailing, though? Is that a whole collection of different ones that you could collect data from? Sorry? In there. Yeah. Um, what are some other examples of uh, useful sites in New Zealand that you've used as fragments? Well, you? one of the things which I wanted to do um, and, and couldn't, but I had to go and, and was, was successful was Yellow. Oh, yeah. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do that is, is to create a statistical frame. And uh, uh, so, like, Stats New Zealand have their, have, have their business frame of where that's all the businesses are. And then from there, you can, uh, they, they draw the samples that you can do statistical inference. But they don't release the business frame. So to be able to get a frame for statistical analysis, you need some measure of what's the population in the area. And that's why I thought, well, <coughs> yellow, fantastic. Uh, but again, you, you start hitting copyright uh, issues around that. And one of the things which we're thinking about now is how easy is it to, to get through through Google and, and maybe using Google's API to be able to do a Google search of the business in that area, to be able to make a, a, a frame. Anything else? I, I think you get access to the business frame or get something from it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sure well, one of the things also I wanted to do with, the, with, with Yellow's site is that a lot of their data is geocoded. So you can do things like, you, you can pull down the business and in, in the background is the geocode. And one of the things I wanted to look at is the cluster of businesses. Like for example, do panel beaters cluster with car painters? Do accountants cluster with lawyers? And spatially, in a geo, geospatial dimension, because the data is both a business frame and a, 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 a spatial aspect to it, do we see things like uh, 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 com companion businesses Clustered together into, into, into areas where uh, there's efficiencies. Uh, paint your car, there's the neighbour. Like for example, how often do you see a pharmacist right next to a to a doctor? That type of stuff. And um, yeah, do that across the country. Can we see systematic, systematic clustering of businesses next to each other? So there's a research purpose, uh, which which uh, I'll say actually hoping to bring and show you guys. <laughs> Maybe one day. Anything else? Otherwise, I'll hand it back to Shirley. Thanks, James. All right, so before um, finishing today's meeting, I'd like to remind you that if there are any topics that you would like to hear, feel free to let me know or let James know or uh, make a comment on, on our website. And um, Or if you know anyone who would like to speak, uh, let us know too. Mm. Mm. We're always looking for speakers. Yes. And uh, like, you don't have to be the world's best R programmer or you don't have to be the, something like that. Just show us what you're doing. Show us what you're up to. And uh, yeah, present things like tips and tricks. Always, always great stuff which, 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 which um, you've learned on, on, on the way. Other things we want to hear about is new packages. Yes. <laughs>
And harmonic analytics. Shirley, <laughs> Shirley can't say it because she's employed by them. But harmonic, and James can't say it, but <laughs> harmonic analytics actually supports the the the, the, the user group. So um, yeah, support those who support us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, 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 so,